Okay, so I'll start off the presentation. Um, this is actually a presentation I'm doing this afternoon at uh, Bone School, and um, the topic is benign bone lesions. When's, when is it okay to tell mum that the spot on her child's x ray is fine and she doesn't need to worry about it? So, benign bone lesions, um, uh, discovering a benign bone lesion or a bone lesion in a child can be very distressing for the parents. And uh, we're, at, we as doctors need to have a lot of confidence in what we're dealing with. Um, and also a lot of um, care and uh, interest in it because uh, parents can take a lot of um, uh, interest themselves in, um, in uh, being uncertain about what's going on and is this a, a cancer or is this something to worry about um, and particularly when it's an incidental finding. Um, but it's important to remember that most lesions are not actually tumours. Uh, you've got to consider infections, cysts, fibrous cortical defects and even when they are a tumour, most tumours are actually benign. And it's estimated that uh, the incidence of fibrous cortical defects and non-ossifying fibromas is actually about 30 to 40 percent in children. There are two ways that uh, bone lesions can present. Uh, firstly, is a symptomatic problem, and secondly, is an incidental finding. Uh, that symptomatic problem could be a mass that's causing a lump or deformity, such as an osteochondroma, which say protrudes out the side of a, a distal femur. Um, it could actually present as a pathological fracture, and we see it in, in fracture clinic or in emergency, um, and we notice a lesion around a site where there's a, a clear fracture line. Um, and that could be an unusual location as well, where a, um, a, a, an area where we thought is relatively stable has a lesion in it and then causes a fracture, up to probably minor, minor trauma. Um, the other problem is pain, uh, and pain can be associated with um, osteoid osteomas, an uh, inflammatory problem or even aneurysmal bone cysts, which are expansile uh, lesions. The incidental finding of a benign bone lesion, uh, as I say, could be after a trauma. And whether that be a, a trauma with um, a, a positive result, uh, say a pathological fracture, uh, noticing an incidental bone lesion, or a normal uh, x-ray where there's no uh, obvious fracture. And uh, we just notice that there's a, a, a lesion somewhere outside of that uh, area of pain. Uh, and that could be with, with a fibrous cortical defect, and enchondromas are also commonly found in this way. So this, uh, you may be able to see some definition in this x-ray, but um, what is this lesion? So it's in the um, distal lateral aspect of the tibial uh, metaphysis, um, especially a skeletally mature patient. Um, it's expansile, it's thin in the cortical bone, uh, there's a central lucency, uh, it's eccentric in the bone, and there's a sclerotic rim around the um, lesion in its central aspect. Um, it's a fibrous cortical defect. And these are often a self-limiting problem, um, but you should consider monitoring these for the, their size, particularly um, if they're greater than 50% of the cortex is involved, and uh, as they are at risk of fracture. And this is just another example of a fibrous cortical defect. You can see, again, the expanse on nature and the, um, the sclerotic, sclerotic margin with um, cortical thinning. When we're describing X-ray uh, bone lesions and X-rays, there's a number of factors that we can consider. Firstly, the pattern of the, the bone lesion. Is it geographic or in certain sections? Or is it uh, moth-eaten or permeative, moving throughout the, um, the medulla and into the cortex of the bone? And this often signifies the increase in growth rate of that particular lesion. Sclerotic, sclerotic margins are actually um, a sign of an indolent lesion, something that's growing very slowly and uh, depositing a lot of bone around the, the edges. Then we consider the matrix, or the, the, the um, internal structure of the lesion. Is there evidence of calcification, uh, which can be suggestive of cartilaginous type tumours? Um, is there a, lu a lucency uh, suggestive of a lytic or destructive process inside? Uh, is there a fluid level, for example, fluid blood, or fluid passing an infection? Um, so that's a, a something which is not commonly seen, but more seen on sort of CT scans or MRI scans, um, but something we, which we consider as well. Uh, and then the involvement of, of the cortex of the bone, either thinning, thickening, or expansion of the bone. And uh, separate to the, cor the cortex is the periosteum. Uh, and, and different ways to describe that, is it smooth and laminated, such as a benign process, or are some of these other factors which are more suggestive of an aggressive process. And uh, this is a, a, a slide from uh, an AOS article in 2002, uh, which first on the left we can see a, um, a benign process of a smooth laminated periosteal reaction. Uh, which is actually a stress fracture in a healing femur, a healing stress fracture in a femur. Um, in slide B, we can see the Codman's triangle uh, type reaction with uh, this is a chondromyxoid fibroma. 
um, in slide number C, we can see the um, onion skin type pattern, which is seen in Ewing sarcoma. And uh, finally on the right here, it's a bit hard to see, but the um, starburst pattern, and this is in fact in a, an osteosarcoma malignancy. So here we can see a, a, an x-ray of a right shoulder, um, an expansile lesion with uh, areas of central lucency, uh, thinning of the cortex, and uh, that uh, lytic nature. Um, and this is a simple bone cyst or a unicameral bone cyst, a common location for them. Um, unicameral bone cysts uh, often present as a low energy fracture. Uh, as we can see, that it's a very thin cortex, a, a common area for torsional forces, and, and that's why they fracture. Um, but the, when they're in the, the lower limb as well, such as the proximal femur or distal tibia, they can also lead to fractures as well. Often they, they heal up with skeletal maturity, um, but recurrent fractures can require surgery, such as curatage and bone graft. So when we see a bone lesion on a, a plain x-ray, uh, what are the things to consider? Um, so it's important to consider infectious causes, so osteomyelitis, um, to consider is there a fracture present, or whether a fracture has been present in the past, and then this is just a lot of callus that we're seeing, um, and also heterotopic ossification, so could there be a reason behind uh, why, we're, why HO is forming. And then other lesion processes, such as uh, EG, or eosinophilic granuloma, which I'll speak about later, um, aneurysm bone cyst, and some of these other causes as well, or, or one of the other types of more, uh, more aggressive bone tumors, uh, benign tumors. So here we can see a, uh, an x-ray of a 13-year-old boy who was kicked in the side of the leg uh, whilst playing soccer. And uh, on the lateral uh, metaphysis we can see an osteochondroma uh, with a fracture through it. So that's a, an incidental finding which causes this patient a lot of pain. Uh, this is one of um, Chris Harris's slides. And uh, here we can see a, a lesion in the distal uh, femoral metaphysis which is a, a U-shaped or an inverted um, U. Uh, with uh, sclerotic margins, a, a lytic area, um, and actually a central nidus, which is a bit hard to see, but I think that's probably the nidus that we're talking about. This is actually an infection, uh, a Brody's abscess. So this is something we need to consider um, when we do see a lesion. Um, infection can take uh, different forms. Uh, there's often an irregular pattern with bone destruction and formation. Uh, there may be suffiginous tracts um, with the, uh, the infection process. Um, and in the acute setting, we can see periosteal elevation and more cortical destruction, destruction. But in a Brody's abscess, it's a subacute process, so we're not seeing that same sort of inflammatory component. Um, and infection can take different forms acute, subacute, chronic, and then there's the uh, CRMO or uh, chronic regional recurrent uh, multifocal osteomyelitis, which is a, um, a genetic problem. And this is just a CT of the same problem. So in seeing a benign bone lesion, consider those infectious uh, factors, particularly on the history, fevers, um, any uh, potential um, hematogenous source for infection, um, and by checking uh, investigations, white cell count, ESR, CLP for uh, raised markers. And that may need to be repeated as well if, they, if there's suspicion about infection after a period of time. Um, also to, to consider hematological disorders when we're seeing a bone lesion. So um, doing a blood film, it, May be, uh, may be relevant, d d depending on what we're finding. And uh, actually, a small proportion of child childhood leukemias actually present with a primary skeletal um, problem, uh, which is found and then further found to have a leukemia later on. So here we can see a 12-year-old boy. This is actually uh, the mid-shaft femur. And we can see a um, extensive sclerotic response, a, a central nidus, which is uh, uh, radiolucent and it's uh, cortically based. This is an osteoid osteoma, and uh, they're actually quite a common uh, problem in adolescence. And, um, but other things to consider, infection, particularly with that nidus, and also stress, fra stress fracture with that amount of periosteal reaction. An 11-year-old boy with an injured foot, a uh, large lucent area with a, a central calcific uh, area. Um, this is an enchondroma, and uh, that stippled or mottled calcific appearance on the inside uh, is consistent with enchondroma. Um, they're often uh, localised in the medulla of the, um, uh, the bone, uh, and this is compared with um, periosteal chondroma, which is periosteally based. Um, consider doing a bone scan <coughs> for um, multiple enchondromatosis with Ollie's disease um, when, when seeing one of these lesions. And uh, often these, these enchondromas can be just managed with observation, um, 
but sometimes if they're causing fractures, they, they may need surgery. Here's just another example of an enchondroma. You can see that stippled modelled calcification in the meta, uh, metaphysis of the bone. This is a, a different lesion again. Um, so it's expansile, distal tibia, um, abutting the, uh, the physis but not including it. Um, a very large uh, lytic area essentially and thinning of the cortices. cortices. Um, with, uh, septations inside, which is the important diagnosis here. This is a, an aneurysmal bone cyst. Uh, these are often metaphyseal based and uh, can present with a, a mass type problem with uh, swelling or in fact pain. And uh, if investigated with M MRI, we do find fluid fluid levels um, because these are, do have a blood component to them or bleeding inside. Um, aneurysm, aneurysm bones is, can be monitored over time, but uh, they often continue to grow, and so often surgery is required, or at least injections. Um, and uh, it's important to consider the physis uh, and its involvement um, to avoid physial uh, arrest. And uh, this is just a spine x-ray, it's just an interesting one with the arrow. Um, don't know if you can see there, but you can see here the, um, the pedicles of the adjacent vertebra and an absent pedicle in, in this one. And uh, this is from an a, a, uh, orthopedic journal, uh, showing, showing the winking owl sign um, with an aneurysmal bone. It's just an interesting name I found. 11-year-old uh, girl uh, presents with a lump in the foot. And you can see it's got a lytic ground glass pattern. There's a well-defined rim of bone. This is fibrous dysplasia, another benign process. Um, but fibrous dysplasia can affect any, type, any bone, but um, often found in the femur. Um, it's a, a failure of production of lamella bone. And uh, there's often associated uh, cutaneous changes, uh, yellow or brown skin patches. Um, and there, there sometimes needs to be um, surgical management if there's, a, if there's recurrent fractures again. Uh, here's just another example, a six-year-old girl. Um, you can see that there's a, a cortically-based lesion. It's got a trabecular background. There's some um, uh, uh, lucency, uh, as a, a mixed sort of uh, pattern. And this is a osteofibrous dysplasia, a more rare disorder, um, often uh, in sort of children younger than 10. And uh, this is a self-limiting problem, so kids grow out of it. There's a staging system for benign bone lesions, um, which considers three stages, and it's about the aggressiveness or activity of the, the lesion. Um, firstly, the uh, uh, latent phase, which is um, self-healing. Uh, the common uh, lesions are osteochondromas or enchondromas, as shown before, um, and they don't grow after the, um, after the split or maturity. Uh, secondly, uh, the active phase, uh, where there's a lot of bone uh, destruction and remodeling. However, the lesion is, is still confined to the bone. Um, for example, the aneurysmal bone cyst that we saw before, which is really dilating the cortexes. And thirdly, aggressive type lesions um, where uh, the lesion can extend out into the soft tissue, but it is still a, a benign process, uh, such as a GCT. And this is just a, an interesting pattern here. This is a desmoplastic fibroma, an aggressive uh, uh, grade 3 type lesion, um, which has got a high, high rate of local recurrence even after resection. So when we see something on a plain film and we've excluded infection or we've thought that it's not infection, um, done, a, done a blood film, don't think it's leukemia, we might need to consider doing other, other imaging. So making sure that we have all different planes of the x-rays that we, we have of the lesion, uh, considering doing a CT scan, particularly if, it's, if surgery is considered or if it's in an area of bone which is difficult to see on x-rays, such as the spine, the pelvis, um, and then considering doing an MRI scan to, to further uh, look at the, uh, the matrix of the, the lesion and check for any soft tissue involvement. Uh, bone scans can be useful to define the location for a presenting problem. So if um, pain is a presenting problem and there's a, a, re a region of complex anatomy, say in the, the pelvis, for example, and we're not quite sure where the, um, the, uh, the lesion itself is, that's a good way to define it. Um, but also for polyostotic processes, for example, multiple enchondromatosis. Um, considering an aspirate, I mean, that will, of course, give us a an aspirate or a biopsy will give us a definitive answer if, if we actually sample the correct lesion. But, um, but obviously, you may get a, a high rate of false, false negatives um, despite doing an aspirate or a biopsy. Um, this lesion here in the left femoral head, uh, central lytic lesion, um, uh, chondroblastoma, which often these, these cases do need uh, surgical management, obviously, being the epiphysis. 
um, his lesion in the, in the right lateral third of the clavicle, which is, uh, has a central lytic uh, area, uh, it's expansile of the cortex, and um, uh, has a, a bit of cortical dilation, uh, it's got sclerotic margins. Uh, this is actually is in uh, granuloma, which is a common mim mimicker of uh, tumours. And uh, EG can be a, uh, a, is a systemic process, uh, causing multiple lesions throughout the body. Um, another one is Albright syndrome, which um, can be associated with some uh, cutaneous changes. It doesn't come up that well on the screen, but and uh, these cutaneous um, pigmentation changes often respect the midline. You can see them here just affect from the left side, um, and they cause uh, diffuse bony lesions. Uh, this is just a, an interesting slide of vertebra plana, which is a, a type of that uh, Langerhans cell or EG uh, diagnosis. So once we've, once we've found the lesion, we know what it is, or we, or we think we know what it is, um, it's important to have a, a degree of confidence in our diagnosis. And, and often the plain x-rays can give us a good idea about what it is and, and what the, um, the, the natural history of the problem is. But we need to be confident when we're speaking to parents about what the plan is. Um, it will differ um, when we're consulting them in clinic about whether the, it's presented as a symptomatic problem, for example, with pain or mass effect, uh, versus an incidental problem, which we can reassure uh, the parents about. Um, and we need to consider, is this going to uh, spontaneously resolve with, with maturity, skeletal maturity? Um, is there a risk of fracture? Um, is, has it got a, an unpredictable course, for example, with osteoma, which is a type of inflammatory uh, bone lesion? And, uh, or if we do undertake surgery, is there a risk of recurrence of the lesion? And uh, also, uh, you know, is there a familiar element to this bone lesion that we're seeing? The risk of fracture is something which is very hard to give a definite answer on. Um, but uh, one, one way of, descri uh, of recommending, is, uh, recommending uh, potential uh, protection of the, of the limb is if it's uh, uh, taking up more than 50% of the transverse diameter of the bone, or if the lesion itself is larger than five centimeters uh, in, in, in that region of bone, um, then that's a, a high, high risk uh, lesion for fracture. Um, upper limb is uh, less likely to fracture than lower limb because of the weight bearing, um, and also consider the surrounding bone quality, for example, with osteoporosis. Um, and in terms of the uh, regularity or the interval with observing these lesions in clinic, um, we've got to have, a, you know, as I said before, we have to know what the diagnosis of the lesion is and, and we're happy with the, the imaging, imaging that we have. Um, if not, then uh, more, more regular observation uh, would be required. Um, also consider the lesion's location or distance from the physis and how often we need to monitor that for physial arrest. Um, and also the risk of fracture, as mentioned before. Um, there are multiple different ways to intervene with these lesions. Um, from injections uh, with methylprednisolone, bone marrow or graft, um, through to radiation or radiofrequency ablation, to more surgical management with uh, curatage, grafting, or, or drilling of the lesion. So um, these things I won't go into, but uh, of course options for all these benign, uh, benign lesions. Uh, so that's all I've got. Thank you.